I don't think it's controversial for me to say that I think smart speakers are here to stay. It's becoming more and more important that we pick the right one for our homes. Google Nest and Amazon Echo currently dominate the market. So let's find out which one is best for you. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. The original Echo debuted all the way back in 2014, meaning Amazon has been around the block a bit now when it comes to smart speakers, which can work seamlessly with loads of other Amazon products like Amazon Shopping, Amazon Music, and even getting Jeff Bezos to sit down and watch that new Lord of the Rings show with you. The Echo lineup is huge, and First and foremost, we have the big ball itself, the Echo. Alongside the Echo, we also have the teeny tiny Echo Dot, oh. which essentially just cuts down the size of the normal Echo and reduces the sound quality just a little bit. There's also the Echo Studio, which is a beast of a speaker, which aims to compete with the likes of Sonos speakers, for example. Finally, when we look at their smart displays, things start to get a little bit complicated. First there's the Echo Show 5 which we have here and uh, this is handy for seeing uh, your cameras that you might have around your house, maybe just checking the weather, maybe you want to do a video call because there's a little camera built in, lots of little things handy with this guy. But as well as the Echo Show 5 we also have an Echo Show 8, an Echo Show 10 and an Echo Show 15. The number actually signifies um, the size of the screen rather than the number in which they came out so make sure you also check that you have the latest gen as well because you're going to want the latest one. Rather than including the prices right now, I know that the Black Friday sales are on um, at both stores, so I'll just include links in the description so you can check the latest price on all of them. So Nest actually originated back in 2010 um, and was separate from Google. Uh, it started off with things like thermostats and doorbells um, and then was acquired by Google in 2014, which worked the Nest branding into its Google Home branding. The first Google Home was released in 2016, um, but they've now changed the name from Google Home to Google Nest Speakers, but the app is still called Google Home. We were pleased to hear that the lineup is way less confusing, however. Google currently has two speakers on offer. The Nest Audio, which like the Echo, is great for audio, listening to music, stuff like that. Um, and then the Nest Mini, which is more in line with the Echo Dot. Uh, and they're great for just sort of smart speaker things, asking questions, uh, but also not too bad on the sound quality side. But for sound quality, you're obviously going to go for the audio. They also have uh, two displays on offer, the Nest Hub, which we have here, and then a Nest Hub Max, which is essentially just the same thing, but bigger. Oh, but the Max doesn't have sleep tracking. God sake, Google, you're doing so well. So as I say, smart speakers aren't the simplest to figure out, so it can be a bit overwhelming and confusing when it comes to picking an ecosystem to dive into. The Google Mini obviously runs in Google's ecosystem, which uses Google Assistant. It's very likely you already know Google Assistant or you've used it before, as Google likes to cram it into pretty much everything they can, like the Google app, Google search, um, and even on Android phones. The Echo devices use Alexa, which has been around for a long time now, and you can find Alexa in um, other devices as well, like a lot of TVs use Alexa these days, and even in things like headphones. It's worth checking what devices you already have when picking an ecosystem, because you might find your headphones have Google enabled or Amazon enabled, and that might sway you one way or the other. Price obviously plays a huge part as well. Times are hard right now. You're not necessarily going to spend a fortune on a speaker. Um, and in that regard, it's worth knowing that the Amazon speakers are on sale more um, and generally cheaper. Um, sometimes they go scarily cheap. And both sometimes throw in free gifts. It's quite regular that you'll um, buy like a ring doorbell from Amazon and they'll throw in an Echo Show. So say you start from scratch, you don't have any devices with Alexa or Google Assistant built in, where do you start? Well, let's run some tests and find out which is right for you. So for the sake of simplicity, today we are going to be mainly focusing on uh, the mini versions of the two speakers as these are probably the most popular right now, uh, simply because of their affordability and how great they are as little speakers. So um, yeah, we'll be putting these through their paces. The setup for any of these devices here is fairly simple. For the Echo, simply download the Amazon Alexa app and then uh, click add speaker, connect to your Wi-Fi, and follow the instructions in setting up your device. One thing I will say about this process is that Alexa will not shut the hell up while you're doing this. Hello, your device is ready for setup. Let's the Alexa app under and for Telecharger the application Alexa and follow the Hola, the dispositivo is listo para que lo configure. For the next speaker, just download the Google Home app, 
click add speaker, set up your Wi-Fi. It might actually even come up and say add speaker without even clicking on a button, it will just detect it, which is nice. So which setup is best? Well, to be honest, both of them are so easy to set up. I think anyone could do it. You don't have to have tech experience. So I'm gonna give this one to both of them and call it a draw. So what about the mic and the performance? Based on asking the same questions to each of them, uh, they both respond really quickly and they both have really good reach. Alexa, what's the weather like tomorrow? Here's the forecast for tomorrow in Manchester. Expect showers with a high of 10 degrees Celsius and a low of 4 degrees. Okay, Google. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow in Manchester, it'll be rainy, with a high of 9 and a low of 6. However, Google does rely a bit too heavily on Google Assistant sometimes, and some of the responses you get are a bit robotic. What is life? Whoa, that's way too deep a question for me. What is life? This is the definition of life the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter. However, this could be an advantage because it has literally the whole of Google at its disposal, um, using things like Wikipedia to find answers to questions you might have. In terms of these two devices here, the Echo Dot does have the edge of being a little bit faster um, in hearing you and replying. Both are very responsive, like I say, but sometimes Google does have a tendency to ignore you. Play Gen X Radio. Playing Gen X Radio Suffolk. 517. Play Gen X Radio. Okay, Google. Play Gen X Radio. Streaming Gen X Radio Suffolk from TuneIn. Um, and it's also a bit more tricky to see when um, she's listening because it's just um, a light on the top as opposed to the light on the bottom on the Echo. One thing I'd always recommend turning on straight away is uh, the audio signal, which uh, on either of them lets you know uh, through just a little doo -doo, uh, that it's listening. So you're not relying just on the lights themselves. Overall, I think the newer hardware of the Dot does give uh, the Dot the edge here over Google. So I'm gonna give this round to the Echo. So in terms of looks, uh, appearance is very subjective, so this is kind of my personal opinion. I'm sure you'll have opinions of your own. The Nest Mini has pill-shaped look to it and comes in a variety of different colours. It uses a touch-based system to control the volume and start stop whatever's playing. This works pretty well and it's been nicely refined uh, over the years. The Echo Dot also comes in a mixture of colours and there's even a kids version. Um, and it's recently switched to a ball-shaped look which uses uh, physical buttons on the top. Both speakers have a power cable going into the back, but the dock keeps its mute button on the top while the Nest Mini has a switch uh, underneath. If you upgrade to the Nest Audio or the Echo, you're also going to get an external speaker port on the back, uh, so you can connect these to other speakers if you wish. Environmental sustainability is obviously extremely important with how tech is made these days, and it's nice to see that these devices are both made with this in mind. Google claims that the Nest Mini Fabric Top is made from 100% recycled bottles, while the Echo Dot has 55% of its plastic and 95% of its fabric made from recycled materials. Personally, I think the Nest Mini is a bit more subtle. Oh. He swaps sides. The dot is a bit more in your face. Uh, and while the clock is cool, it can look a bit strange sometimes when you ask it something and it's having to like read it all out. As I say, the mini's lights are a bit harder to see than the dots, but the dots is only really better if you have like a reflective surface. However, the mini's lights are actually a bit better for seeing the sound level. Uh, Cause like I say, cause this is at the bottom and it's just a ring. It's quite hard to figure out what level of sound you're actually on. So yeah, I think the mini wins that. I also think I prefer the Nest Audio look over the Echo. Um, the Nest Audio just looks more like a speaker and I think that's what you want when you're paying that sort of money for a good speaker. The Echo just looks a bit like a Pokeball, um, which is cool, but I think personally I prefer the Nest Audio. And in terms of smart displays, they all look quite similar, but it's worth noting that you obviously get much more variety with um, the Echo. Overall then, I think I'm gonna give this round to the Nest devices um, and more specifically the Nest Mini. So one of the most important things with a speaker is their sound quality. The Nest Mini has a 360 degree sound with a 40 millimeter driver, while the Echo Dot has a 1.73 millimeter front firing speaker. The Echo Dot is a bit punchier and a bit bassier uh, than the Nest Mini. Uh, but both sound pretty similar to be honest. At full volume, the Nest Mini speakers begin to sound a bit tinny, while the Echo Dot holds up quite well. On this episode of Radio & Co. I was at Magic for three and a half years, but I worked myself down to the ground because I'd be DJing till like two, three in the morning on the weekends, but then I'd have to be up at work at 5 a.m. in the morning to produce a breakfast show Monday to Friday. 
coming up on this episode of Radio & Co. I was at Magic for three and a half years, but I wear myself down to the ground because I'd be DJing until like two, three in the morning on the weekends, but then I'd have to be up at work at 5am in the morning to produce a breakfast show Monday to Friday. It's important to note that neither of these are made for sound quality really, and for that you should probably go for the Nest Audio or the Echo, uh, because both of these sound superb. Overall then, uh, as these two pretty much draw, and I think the Echo Dot wins in terms of the Mini, I'm gonna give this round to the Echo. Both speakers have the option to integrate popular music platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and TuneIn, but both also integrate their own platforms. More on that in the next round. Very recently, we added um, integration with Google speakers, so you can now use either of these with Ray.co stations. Nest speakers have most of their features built in, while the Echo, you have to add skills in the app for various things, such as listening to radio on like Global Player, for instance. This could be seen as a bit of a negative on the Echo's part, but it does allow for a lot more possibilities as there's loads of things you can add in. They also both have the option to control things like smart plugs, smart lights, and even TVs. It's hard to really choose a winner here because you could say that both speakers kind of do the same things. Um, you might want to say that the Echo has more possibilities because of the skills, like I mentioned, but I kind of feel like most people won't touch half the stuff they have to offer and the stuff that's built in on Google will be more than enough. So I'm gonna call this one a tie. So what about exclusive features? For the Nest Mini, it's using Google services like Google Search, Google Calendar, YouTube and YouTube Music, Google Maps and loads more. While the Dot has Amazon Music and Audible. Both also have Bluetooth though, so you could technically still play Audible on um, a Nest speaker and YouTube Music on an Amazon Echo, it's just a bit fiddly. Both speakers also have the option to control your greater smart home. Nest speakers can control most tech that uses Google Home, such as Nest cameras and Google and Android TVs uh, and Chromecast, while Echo speakers control ring devices and fire TVs. If you're big into video calling, when it comes to displays, it's important to note that the um, Echo displays have a camera built in while the Google one doesn't. However, if sleep tracking is more your thing, then the Nest Hub is probably the way to go as it allows you to track your sleep at night without wearing a smartwatch. I mentioned before that Google Assistant is used in most Android phones, so if uh, you have an Android phone, it might make more sense to go down um, the Google Home route. Adding something to your shopping list will be super easy um, as you can just ask to add something to your shopping list and then that'll go straight onto Google Keep which is pretty much built into most Android phones. However, Alexa is still accessible on Android devices through the app. So you could theoretically still use Alexa like you would uh, Google Assistant on an Android device. Uh, it's just a bit more clunky. For Apple users, however, both speakers should probably be treated equally um, as Siri is the native AI on Apple devices, which means you can't say like, add something to my shopping list and that goes straight onto the Apple Notes app, for instance, um, but hey ho. So this round kind of depends um, a lot on what services you already use. So I don't think I can pick a winner here and it's gonna have to be a draw, but I would like to give a special mention to Google just for the sheer amount of Google services available on these speakers. So what about the apps themselves? Well, I think this is another round that could be seen as quite subjective. While Google Home is cleaner and easier to navigate, the Alexa app has a lot more possibilities with skills and gives you a lot more suggestions of what you can and can't do. Both also give you the option to set routines, which allow you to turn lights on and off at certain times, um, and even start playing music when you say goodnight. Personally, while slightly more barren um, than the Alexa app, I do think the Google Home app has the edge here, as it's just a bit cleaner, a bit nicer to use. It's probably a bit dated in comparison to Alexa now, as it hasn't changed much over the years, but Google are releasing a big update in the coming months, so yeah, I think we're gonna see the Google Home app at the edge on this one. Time for the roundup, and very helpfully, it's a big fat draw. But I do think this is fair, as both smart speakers of both ecosystems are fantastic within themselves. Like I said throughout this video, it's really down to preferences, uh, but in terms of these two little speakers here, I think the edge does have to go to the Echo Dot. My preference personally is, well, I used to be team uh, Alexa. Uh, a couple of years ago, I switched to Google. I have a Google TV and I used to be a Google Pixel owner, so it just sort of made sense really. However, I cannot deny the sheer scale of Amazon's variety. They have so many. And like I say, the price is generally cheaper too. So if you're a big tech fan that likes weird techie things, but doesn't want to spend a fortune, Amazon is a great place to go. So, which one will you be picking up? Have you maybe already picked a side? Are you maybe thinking of switching now? Let us know down in the comments, and while you're down there, you might as well click the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring that bell. But until next time, thank you very much for watching, and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? 
Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software.